Welcome back everyone to the Readiness Channel. Today is all about building a container garden. You know, I think all of us at some point in our life have gone to the store and bought a tomato plant or some other vegetable plant, come home stuck in the yard and just wondered why we didn't have much success. There are three key components that we need to think about to successfully grow vegetables and that is nutrient rich, well draining soil. We need the appropriate water and sunlight and if we're able to solve those three things, you too can grow fresh fruits and vegetables at your own home. A container garden like this solves all of those problems for us. So get your work gloves on and let's dig in. Okay, dig in, might have been a bad pun. Time to get serious though now, so let us begin. You purchased your pot, you brought it home, now what? You'll notice a lot of these do not have a drainage hole in the bottom of them when you per uh, first purchase them easy to remedy we're simply going to take this pot uh, I'm just going to use a one inch spade drill and drill a hole right in the middle you could drill smaller holes around the perimeter there's all kinds of different ways you can do it but this works fine for me all right now let's talk about probably the number one reason that you're going to grow in container versus just sticking in the ground and that's the soil uh, in my area, we have compacted river bottom soil around here that is very poor in nutrients and it's very compact. Uh, it gets hard as cement in the summertime. Uh, this soil here, a good potting mix like I'm using here, is very rich in organic material. It's very loose and well draining. And what I like about this particular brand is if it has a moisture control element to it. I don't know exactly what it is they put in there that accomplishes that, but in the triple digit uh, temperatures in my town in the summertime, that does seem to help in these containers. All right, you've got your container. We've put some drainage in it. You've picked up a good quality, nutrient rich soil that's well draining. Now it's just a matter of filling up our tub. Setting up our little garden area was easily accomplished by just placing some shovelfuls of dirt in each spot I was going to place a container. I leveled it and compacted the soil and then placed these concrete pavers in each location. I've opted to use these plastic trays at the bottom of each container just due to the high summertime temps in my area. This allows a little bit of water reservoir at the bottom of the container so that the soil doesn't get too dry in between watering sessions. I set up these tubs to be automatically irrigated by my sprinkler system and I'm going to show you how to set that up now. To set up my automatic irrigation drip lines on my tubs, I simply located my automatic irrigation system already placed in my yard. You're used to seeing standard sprinkler heads like this somewhere in your yard. I'm going to show you how to access this and convert it to the drip line system that we're going to use on our container garden. I built a mock-up of a standard sprinkler system that you'll commonly find in most areas. Uh, the sprinkler shot that I just showed you a minute ago looking down on the top of the sprinkler in the dirt, this is what it's going to look like in the ground. Uh, you'll have a PVC pipe running around the perimeter or irrigation field in your system. You'll have a threaded riser in there and the pop-up sprinkler is threaded onto that. So how do we convert this over to a drip line irrigation for our container garden? We're going to simply dig out some of the dirt around the sprinkler, just enough to allow you to unscrew it from the riser. Once you get that off, you can just get rid of that. Down on the ground, there'll be a hole and you'll have to reach down in there with a tool like this that will allow you to access the riser and unscrew it from the pipe. Once you've got that out of there, we're just left with the pipe, the fitting, and the threaded end on it ready to go. Depending on where you live, uh, these, the depths of these systems can range from four to six inches, maybe more in areas with heavy frost. I don't know where we live in California. I believe six inches is kind of a standard, maybe four in some areas. So you'll just have to determine what length riser you need. You can pick these up at any big box store in different lengths. Once you've determined how far you want this coming up out of the ground, you just reach down in, tighten that up good and tight where you don't have any leaks down in the ground. And then there are several manifolds available for this type of irrigation system. This is just one, and we're gonna simply 
we'll screw that right on top of our riser. And then it's just a matter of connecting our plastic tubing to the manifold and running it to our tub where we'll set up the emitter uh, to water our container garden. And I'll show you that now. Now our manifold is sticking up out of the ground as we showed you in our mock-up. I've got one of the ports open here for a line. I'm just going to take a roll of uh, drip line tubing. We're going to just press it on there and make sure it's good and tight. Now it's just simply a matter of running it over here where we have, give yourself enough slack on these. You don't want to cut it too short because it just makes it harder later on. And as this heats up in the sun, it'll relax and get more, uh, it won't coil up and stick up out of the ground like this. This is the type of emitter that I use. It's adjustable and has a multiple fan spray. There's different kinds and you know, your mileage may vary. Pick one that works best for you. I've had good luck with these. I'm just gonna stick that in there and then we'll turn on our sprinkler and figure out where this needs to be adjusted. Our sprinklers are running and we're just gonna simply open this up and we'll find out where we need it for good coverage and what we're trying to do. And it's as simple as that. The nice thing about this is you can adjust your sprinkler timers throughout the year so that your garden maintains a consistent watering pattern, which is very important, especially when growing things like tomatoes and and certain vegetables. Now, just by way of conversation while we're talking about it, if you don't have the ability to set up irrigation like this, you can certainly water by hand, just regular hand watering cans, or there are hose uh, drip lines and things with timers that you can add just to a regular water spigot. So you have a lot of options. It would be easy to assume that you wouldn't be able to grow very much food in a small container garden like this. But I would submit to you that you have to look at something like this through the lens of progressive planning. Uh, what that means is simply right now it's early in the year. The sun isn't high in the sky. This area is a little bit cooler and more shaded. So I've got cool weather plants growing in this area. Lettuces, cabbage, things like that. One early girl tomato. And as the summer progresses into a more, uh, this area gets to be more of a sunlit hot area then these plants will be over with and then we move into zucchini peppers eggplants and things like that so if you look at your container garden as a progressive planting uh, method then you'll be able to grow a great deal of food out of a relatively small area and i guess this is a good a time as any to bring up the question that i'm sure some have and that is does preparedness and gardening have anything to do with one another and I would say yes, they do. Anytime you're working to gain skills to become more self-reliant and be able to produce food in a situation where maybe you can't just go pick it up at a grocery store, then you're absolutely becoming better prepared. Here's another example of a more affordable small container garden that you can easily build. These are plain five gallon food grade buckets that I've drilled a couple of 3 8 drainage holes in the bottom of. I filled these with the same nutrient-rich potting soil that we talked about earlier. And with a simple setup like this, you can easily grow vegetables in your yard in a minimal amount of space. This year, I'm going to test the success rate of growing carrots and these two cherry tomatoes in buckets like this. Uh, the carrots, I'm starting from seed in the left-hand bucket, just a direct sow method. And these two cherry tomatoes are different varieties that we're going to try in these individual buckets as well. I think this will be a good container for this type of plant, and I think we'll have good growth and good tomato production from it as well. Additionally, I think the depth of the bucket and the amount of soft soil in it will be a good growing environment for the carrots too. This will be a fun thing to monitor throughout this summer, and we'll try to do a follow-up video later in the year to show you uh, how this worked out. Another small container growing option are these grow bags. You can purchase either a single bag or multiple bags at a time and simply place uh, the nutrient rich soil into them and you're ready to grow. Just like the five gallon buckets, these have the advantage of being able to easily be moved around in your yard to maximize sunlight exposure throughout the growing season. Additionally, the grow bags can be folded up and stored at the end of the season so that you don't have to dedicate certain space in your yard or home area just for growing. There are some circumstances where growing in a container is an absolute must versus a convenience. Uh, 
these are blueberry bushes. I've got one in this container and two in this stock watering trough. Uh, these bushes require a high acidity in the soil that is not found in my local area. Uh, by simply buying some containers and getting the appropriate soil and bags, I'm able to successfully grow a lot of blueberries off these three bushes every year. And it's just another example of where container gardening can solve a problem. Okay, I hope today's video truly inspired some of you to get out in the garden and get your hands dirty. Uh, gardening may sound like the realm of the little old lady uh, wearing the big straw hat out in the yard, but I can assure you that as you start gaining this new skill, you'll find that there are a lot of difficulties and pitfalls and a lot of lessons to learn along the way. I've had a lot of successes and, and quite a few failures as I've begun to branch out and learn how to grow my own food. So remember, as always, get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive.